Hey guys, so today we are going to be creating this cutie, Garbanzo the Tinseal. Garbanzo is in love with two things, hummus and Christmas. While everyone starts celebrating Christmas at the end of November, Garbanzo starts celebrating at the beginning of January. That's right, he is an all year round Christmas kind of guy. He's also really adorable, so let's get started. I'm Beyonce and I'm better than you. Hey. Beyonce is better than everybody. I aspire to be just like her someday, eventually. Oh, I don't work as hard. <laughs> now Garbanzo is a tin seal that loves Christmas and throughout this video I'm going to be giving you some facts about other famous tin seals. Now to create this cake I'm using my PVC pipe stand system. I drilled a hole into the middle of a 12 inch cake board. And using some hot glue I glued a PVC pipe into the middle. And once the glue had hardened I started to stack my cakes to create Garbanzo. Did you know that tin seals are the color blue because they like to drink blue milk? Which is blueberries that are steeped in milk and then mixed with sugar. Wow. Is that a thing? I'm drinking that tonight. Let's create this tin seals body. I'm using three different cake sizes. I'm just plunging the PVC pipe into the middle of my cake. I'm going to add buttercream in between each layer of cake and just smoothen it out with my offset spatula. I'm going to add another layer of cake and the first three layers of cake are all six inch round cakes. I'm kind of just shifting the cakes more towards the center as I'm stacking. So after the six inch cakes, I added a four inch round cake. I didn't want to stack these cakes straight up. I wanted there to be like a slope. Almost like the shape of like a crescent moon or the top of a crescent moon. And this was a lot closer to the middle. And I added some more buttercream and then I added a two inch round cake. The PVC pipe is in the middle of this last cake. Then it was time to start carving my seal shape. The body of a tin seal is somewhere like in between the shape of a cone and a teardrop. It's like a very long, 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 long teardrop. Uh, it's like when you're sitting at home a week after Thanksgiving and you're just thinking about how many days of turkey and stuffing you put yourself through. <laughs> it's like one of those tears. <laughs> now once I was happy with the shape, I gave this baby a crumb coat. I started to add my buttercream like this because I think it looks really pretty. I just smoothened it out and flattened it with my offset spatula to seal in all the crumbs on this layer of buttercream. It's really important because there isn't a second layer of buttercream and I don't want any of the crumbs to like be stuck to the side of my fondant. After that I started to work on Garbanzo's head. I love that name man. Garbanzo. I want to say it with an accent. Garbanzo. Where is that person from? I don't know. Now to create Garbanzo's head I'm using two six inch half dome cakes. But I didn't fill them all the way up. I left about an inch of room. Just so that they would be the perfect size. I'm going to add some buttercream and just give this baby a crumb coat. Covering the entire thing and spreading it around my offset spatula. Fun fact about tin seals. I don't know how fun this is, but it's, it's a made up uh, comment fact that you guys gave me. So I think it's pretty interesting. <laughs> tin seals are called tin seals because they like to eat tin soul, which litters the ground where they live because of pollution. Sad, very and interesting and also very fun. <laughs> to make sure that I keep this sort of rounded shape, I'm adding on a piece of saran wrap and then placing it in the cake pan so that the bottom of the face stays round. Adding some buttercream into the middle and then placing on the other half of the dome cake. I gave this baby a crumb coat and I placed the head and the body in the fridge for about two hours, I think. Now while I was chilling, I was watching Netflix and I was watching this movie called To All the Boys I Loved Before. It's really cute. Now initially I only watched it because the lead actress Lana is Jubilee in the X-Men movie. I love me some X-Men. And I thought it was really funny. I've never sent letters to anyone that I've liked, but I did make a lot of mixed tapes, mixed CDs back in high school and I never gave them to the people I liked because low self-esteem. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go watch it and if you have, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. 
Now let's get back to the cake. Once my cake was done chilling, I put on a black glove because the regular gloves look weird on camera. Right? Look, it looks like I'm gonna perform a surgery or I'm gonna do some work in your mouth. But what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the surgical glove or the glove that looks like I'm gonna go like burglarize a Tony Romas? I wet my glove with a little bit of water and I just ran my hands over the entire cake. I just wanted to make sure that the buttercream underneath my fondant was completely smooth. Did you know that in 1992, a tin seal named Demetrius became the first M A M S A R S wrong to win an Academy Award? Congratulations. Another fun fact about Demetrius, he went to jail later that year for being a serial killer. Congratulations. After that, I cut away the PVC pipe at the top of my cake and I also cut my two fingers. Can you see? I'm wearing band-aids. And I think that's kind of gross. Nobody ate this cake, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> now I'm wrapping some blue fondant around the tip of my seal. I mean, the shape was nice, but I think it needed to be thicker. That's what she- I'm gonna cover my entire cake with a single piece of that colored fondant. Oh, I like it. It's a life force blue. Yeah, boy. That's a good name. Bear. Yo. Yo! Bear paints, you guys are working hard over there, huh? Now I'm wrapping my cake from front to back and I'm placing the seam of the fondant at the back of my cake. And I just smoothened it out with my hands and used some fondant tools to push it into the bottom of my cake. Now Demetrius wasn't the only tin seal to go to jail. In 1855, Skyla, another tin seal, murdered her brother. <gasps> wow, so many murders. These seals are too cute and they're apparently psychopaths. <laughs> this comment's funny, but it's inappropriate, so I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> now there is a long seam at the back of the cake and to cover it, I'm adding a triangle of light blue fondant. It's like one shade lighter than the rest of the body. And I'm just placing it on the back because I wanted his belly and the bottom of the seal to be a different color. Not really, but I needed to cover this seam somehow. For Garbanzo's head, I realized that it wasn't completely round, so I had to cut a little bit of the top off so they could be more of an oval shape. Gave it another crumb coat and then covered it with the same color fondant as the body. Life Force Blue. This name is giving me life. Now there was a huge mess at the bottom of this cake. I hate sphere cakes, they're so stupid. I just cut away the mess with a pair of scissors. And you're not gonna see the back of this because it's gonna be pressed against Garbanzo's body. And I started to do a little bit of work on his face. I added a little bit of magic sauce to the center of his face. And then added a D-shaped piece of maroon fondant to create the inside of his mouth. I'm adding a pebble shape of blue fondant to get his snout. And using some fondant tools, I just separated the right and the left side of his snout. And on went some black fondant to create his nose. I wanted to make sure that his eyes had a little bit of depth. So I'm using a ball fondant tool and just pushing down the areas where his eyes are going to be. Now my cake was getting really soft, so I placed it back into the fridge and I started to work on his paws and his back flippers. Now to create Garbanzo's arms, I rolled out some blue fondant into a log shape and I just made it thick on one side to create his paws. I'm just using a paring knife to cut a separation for each of his paws, toes, fingers, patogers. They're not toes, so... Pongers. Went over them with a soft fondant tool just so I could soften up my knife marks. After that, I repeated that process with the other arm. To create his back fins, I made some templates and I just placed them on top and cut out the shape with my paring knife. I'm using a lighter shade of the Life Force Blue fondant and I just added some CMC to the fondant so that it would get extremely hard. The harder it gets, the easier it is to work with, that's what. Now in between each of the fins, I brushed on some edible glue and then placed in a dowel so I could plunge it into the PVC pipe when it's time to put it in the cake. Just makes everything super simple. I covered the dowel with a second piece of the fin and then I just placed it onto a cake board to set up. Now, I didn't want this to be completely flat. I wanted there to be this illusion of movement. So I scrunched up some pieces of parchment paper and just placed them underneath the fondant. I repeated this with a second piece of fondant and I just let it set for about a day. Then it was time to assemble Garbanzo. Now his body was a little too round so I cut a little bit of the cake off at the front. 
then I attached his head. Man, I got really excited assembling this. It just, it looks so bomb. It was head, his left and his right arm. Then I added some big black fondant eyes. And I'm just gonna give these two some catch lights. And now for our final fact. Did you know that more than 100,000 acres of Christmas tree land is decorated by tin cells each year? That's about 200,000 trees per acre. Square foot, acre, yard, meter. That's a lot of measurement. Now let's finish this baby. I wanted to add some character to his face, so I gave him some brown freckles under each of his eyes. Finally, I inserted each of his back flippers and voila, my tin seal was complete. You look so cute. This, I, yes. I created this cake when I was sketching out my mermaid cake and I was trying to think about how I could put a face on it and then it just turned into a seal and I was, I was just so happy. Now Garbanzo is a huge fan of Christmas and he likes to celebrate Christmas all year round, but at the start of November, he kicks into high gear. He puts on his favorite costume and turns into a living, walking, breathing Christmas tree. Christmas trees can breathe air, but they can't walk. And then we kill them by chopping them down so they can't breathe anymore. That tree didn't want to get chopped down. He wanted to live and become big and strong. <laughs> What are we doing on this planet? Now to create Garbanzo's costume, I wrapped some green fondant all the way around his entire body. And I'm just using some fondant tools to give it texture and make it look like Christmas garland. And I'm adding some red balls of fondant to create some red Christmas ornaments. And then the piece de la resistance. You yeah, know, you got it. Thank you. I added a yellow Christmas tree star on top. And then, da 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 da, our new cake of Garbanzo the Tin Seal was complete. It looks so close to the picture, doesn't it? I made this picture and I, I made this cake. How? How? Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your beautiful comments and helping me create this video. And just wait, because I used this same shape to create a Santa Claus hat as well as a mermaid cake. So I'll be posting those videos later on this month and the next. This mermaid cake, you guys, it's insane. It is what, how, I don't know. I love you guys, I will see you very soon. Peace.